A painful and stiff lower back can easily ruin your day, limiting what you can do and leaving you feeling exhausted. Follow along with easy exercises in this video for instant relief from pain and stiffness that lasts. And this is a topic that is really personal for me because I had a surgery when I was 14 years old that left me with this pretty big scar back here and I've got a lot of personal experience in dealing with low back pain. So if you've got low back pain that kind of consistently comes back and you know you rest and you do some things and it typically goes, goes away after one to two or three weeks but it keeps coming back then this video is for you because it's going to give you something to do whenever it comes back and also a path forward. Now before we get into the exercises and the underlying theory there's one study that I wanted to talk about that is really important because it gives you a good perspective on low back pain. Dr. B and I have talked about this study before and I just want to highlight the important findings from it. First of all, the study is on asymptomatic people, so that's people who don't have any pain or any symptoms at all. And the study found that 50% of people who are 40 years old had a disc bulge and 70% of 60 year olds had a disc bulge. And remember, these people do not have any pain. So what this goes to show you is that what you find on an MRI or an x-ray isn't necessarily the reason for your pain. You could have findings on this type of imaging and no pain or you could have findings with imaging and have pain. These aren't the things to focus on. The things to focus on are how your body functions and how you move on an everyday basis. Now if your lower back is painful and stiff, avoid the common recommendation to stretch by flexing, bending, twisting, and then holding that position. The reason why is because this can result in tissue creep of the disc or the ligaments that can further irritate an already irritated tissue. Now let me give you a little demonstration of something here. This is a City of Toronto parking ticket and this one is fully intact. If I just hold this little tab here, this perforated edge here, I'm holding a standard, like a standard stretch. I'm trying to stretch this paper apart. It's okay, it's no problem. Now, we've got another City of Toronto parking ticket here. And let me just irritate the tissue a little bit. I'm just ripping that perforated edge just a little bit. Now, if I'm gonna hold that just with the same amount of pressure, just holding it, holding it, holding it, and then it just rips. It's already irritated. And by holding that standard pressure, sooner or later, we're just gonna further rip that already irritated or damaged tissue. That's why we don't wanna do static stretching. Instead, what we need to do is activate the surrounding musculature, so that's around the lumbar spine, core stability, the hips, and the pelvis. And by activating these muscles, we're telling the brain, hey, we've got stability here. We can actually let go of these, this muscle tightness and that'll help you to move more freely. The reason why your brain tightens up the muscles is as a protective mechanism because if you've already got these irritated tissues, your brain wants to lock everything down so you don't move and you don't further injure tissues. So the best way to relieve this pain and this stiffness and tightness is to activate the stabilizing muscles around the area to tell your brain to relax and to do this in movements and positions of everyday life. And that's exactly what we're gonna do with these four exercises. We're gonna go through four exercises that activate the stabilizer muscles in the low back, around the pelvis and the hips. And the key in performing these exercises is precision. Focusing on the proper cues and executing them, thinking about three things. Your alignment, breathing naturally, so relaxed breathing, and control, moving under control and maintaining the muscle activations that I'm gonna teach you as you go through the exercises. When I first demonstrate, I'm not gonna tell you reps or sets or anything like that. Just follow along with me and focus on the technical cues. And we'll cover the reps and sets at the end of this video. The first exercise is the standard hip bridge. I'm sure you've done this before. And it's good because you can do it in bed. If your back, you wake up and your back is already painful and stiff, you could do it just lying in bed. Lie down and you wanna restore the natural curve in your lumbar spine. 
So you should be able to fit your hand in between your low back and the ground. There should just be a little bit of pressure on your hand there. From there, make sure everything is relaxed. You can move your hips around a little bit and relax everything. And the first thing I'm gonna do is activate my pelvic floor muscles. It's also known as a Kegel contraction. And if you don't know how to do it, just think of if you're peeing, stopping your pee midstream. So you activate those deep pelvic floor muscles. Then I'm gonna activate the feet. This is something we call the shortened skinny foot or active arch. So I'm just gonna to try to grip the floor with my feet. We've got other videos on this on YouTube here. From there, I'm gonna activate the glutes. So this is the third activation that I'm gonna focus on before I actually do any movement here. So now I've got pelvic floor, feet, and glutes on. I'm gonna keep everything on and then slowly lift up my hips just as straight so I'm not hyperextending the low back, not overusing the low back muscles, holding here for five seconds and I'm breathing naturally. Just nice, relaxed breathing, keeping all those activations on, then I'm gonna lower down, keeping everything on, all the way to the ground, soft landing. And on the ground, I'm gonna gradually ramp down activation. So slowly let everything go. You can relax again, move the knees in and out, wiggle the toes. And then pelvic floor activation, so stop the pee. Feet, grip the floor, glutes, get those butt muscles on and keep everything on as I slowly lift up, holding for about five seconds, breathing naturally, not holding my breath, not tensing my shoulders or my neck, and slowly lower down all the way to the ground, soft landing, and then gradually let all those activations go. Relax, wiggle around. And that is the way that we're gonna do the hip bridge, teaching our body that we've got activation of these muscles throughout this range of motion. So I'm connected from my foot to my lumbar spine and I'm breathing naturally. So I'm not tense and I'm allowing my body to relax. From this one exercise, you might find already if your pain was a five or a six or a seven out of 10, down one, two or three notches. The second exercise we're gonna go through is another very simple technique that requires your attention to detail because you can't see a lot going on. And it's the standing glute contraction. This exercise is going to take those elements and those activation patterns that we learned in the hip bridge up to the standing position. So we're standing here and you wanna make sure you're in good posture, so nice, and tall, aligned, but relaxed. You're not holding there with a lot of tension. Here, even weight between my left and right foot, from my heel to my forefoot, shoulders are back in a nice position, chin is tucked, and I'm straight. The reason why this is so important is because we wanna facilitate this, we want your body to remember this going throughout the day. Because when you're hunched over like this, that's a lot of body weight that my low back muscles have to support adding to the tension. And it's also putting you in that flex position, which is going to irritate those already potentially irritated tissues in the disc and or the ligaments. So relaxed posture, up nice and tall. So that good alignment. You're gonna start off this exercise with your feet shoulder width apart. And the first activation this time is the feet. So we're gonna activate the feet. So create that active arch so I'm trying to make, pull my forefoot towards my heel and make my foot skinny, the short and skinny foot. So from there, I'm not curling my toes, I'm activating the deep muscles in the foot. And again, we have a video, we'll link it in the resources in the description here so that you can check that out on the foot intrinsic muscles. From here, activate the pelvic floor muscles. So stop the pee midstream. And then we're gonna ramp up activation of the glutes, so gradually, go from zero up as high as you can without any irritation or discomfort, focusing on slight internal rotation of the hips, so turning the thighs slightly inwards. And this is gonna activate some deep hip muscles that are really important for stability, including the high adductors like the pectineus and the psoas. So we're ramping up that activation. Once we're ramped up, we're gonna hold here for 10 seconds 
while breathing naturally, relaxed breathing, and maintaining good alignment, good posture. When we're done, we're gonna slowly ramp everything down, relax everything, and then just move around a little bit, shake it out. Let's do this one more time so you can get these cues and these technical pointers. Feet shoulder width apart, create the active arch, so make the short and skinny foot, don't curl the toes, ramp up the pelvic floor muscles, stop the pee midstream, and then layer on top of that, glute muscle activation with a slight bit of internal rotation, turning the thighs inwards towards each other. Hold there as high as you can, as high activation as you can without any pain or discomfort. Breathing deep, trying to relax the low back as much as you can. Maintaining good posture. And then gradually let everything go. And then move around a bit and walk around a bit. So that's the standing glute contraction with a little bit of internal rotation. And that's gonna make sure that now that we're in the standing position, your body knows what stability and good posture feels like. The third exercise is the classic core stability exercise, the bird dog. I first learned this from Dr. Stu McGill when I was one of his students in the biomechanics class at the University of Waterloo. And I've been using it ever since personally and for clients. So it's really helpful to get a stick. I got my old hockey stick here, a dowel, a broomstick, something that can help you to maintain good alignment. And it helps you to ensure that you're centered and maintaining your stability. The setup position is knees underneath the hips, directly under the hips, hands directly under the shoulders, elbows straight and locked out, and push away from the floor a little bit to activate the scapular stabilizers like the serratus anterior. That's a good setup position. Now you get neutral spine, and this is where the stick comes in handy. So you can put the stick up on your back, and you'll want three points of contact. Your head, in between your shoulder blades, and your tailbone. And you should have a little bit of space between your low back and the stick. That indicates that you've got your natural lumbar curve there. From here, what I recommend most people do is lift one leg straight out slowly, making sure you're not shifting left or right, or forwards or backwards, and maintaining those three points of contact. Once the leg is up straight, you lift the arm, and I like to go up at 45 degrees just to get a little more lower trapezius activation going. It's commonly underactive muscle. Here you're holding for 10 seconds, staying away from the floor, breathing naturally. From there, soft landing. You can go one at a time or both at the same time. And switch sides. So leg first, making sure you're not shifting left or right, forwards or backwards. And then arm up at 45 degrees, thumbs up. Breathing naturally. Holding for 10 seconds. And then lower down slowly with the soft landing. Just like so. Now, the key there is not shifting your body left or right. So oftentimes when you lift one leg up, you'll shift your body weight away from that leg to give yourself the balance. But we, want, we don't wanna do that. We wanna maintain that position that we started in and force the stabilizer muscles to keep us in position. And those stabilizer muscles are the multifidus. Those are the main ones that we're trying to hit here, the lumbar multifidus. And they're really important for that deep spine stability that keeps your spine in place as you're moving about and avoids, and that helps you to avoid excess wear and tear on the discs and the ligaments. Now, if you do have trouble and you're not sure if you're shifting left or right, what you could do is put your hip right up against the door frame. And when you're going up, let's say I'm lifting my left leg, the tendency will be for my right hip to shift towards the right. So when I'm doing my left leg, put my right hip up against the door frame, and that's gonna help you to be more aware of your positioning and to maintain better form during this exercise. The fourth and final exercise is the activated squat. 
And this is a movement pattern that we need in everyday life, getting up and down from chairs, up and down from the toilet. And this is something that when we tell our body how to do it with stability, it will help you to get that back pain relief, but then keep it as you move throughout your day. We're gonna layer in those activation patterns that we just learned in the standing glute contraction, and then bring that into the squat movement pattern. And you don't lose those activation patterns. That's the key to this movement. So to do that, we've got feet shoulder width apart again. First thing, we're gonna activate the intrinsic foot muscles. So make the foot short by pulling the forefoot towards the heel and skinny across the metatarsals, which is right above, right below the toes. From here, pelvic floor activation, and then layer on top of that, glute activation with a little bit of internal rotation of the hips, so turning those thighs slightly inwards. Now maintaining good posture, going really slowly, we're gonna squat down, maintaining that activation pattern that we started. And you only go as low as you can go. So if this is as low as you can go, you stop here and then you come up. But if you can go lower, go lower. The key is stop before you lose any of those activations that we started, and then you come up very, very slowly. At the top, you go all the way to the top. Don't let your hips flare out, so externally rotate at the top like that. Keep that slight internal rotation at the top, and then we let everything go. Let's go through that again. So shake it out a bit. First things first, the feet, short and skinny foot, now the pelvic floor, ramp that up, and then the glutes, layer that on top. Slight internal rotation, keep all that, keep good posture. Relaxed breathing and going very slowly, squatting and just scanning those activation patterns. Feet, pelvic floor, and glutes. Once before you start to lose it, come back up, staying slow, slow-mo, all the way to the top, keep that internal rotation, and then let everything go slowly. Let's do that one more time. Shake it out, wiggle the toes a bit, breathe, then activate the feet, and then the floor, and then the glutes. Keep all that on, that slight internal rotation, squat down, and just before you lose it, pause briefly, and then come back up. It doesn't matter how low you go right now, we're just trying to teach your body stability and activation. At the top, maintain the internal rotation and then let everything go and shake it out. And this activated squat is gonna help you to, again, get that stability that you need in the lumbar spine, in the pelvis and in the hips, and then bring that into a movement pattern. So basically both hips are doing this at the same time, but through flexion and extension, which is useful for going upstairs, walking, bending down, whatever it is you need to do in your everyday life, you need stability to tell your back and to tell your brain that everything's good here, just chill out, calm down and relieve some tension and relieve some pain. For sets and reps of the exercises, for the hip bridge, do one to two sets of five reps, holding for five seconds at the top. For the standing glute contraction with hip IR, do one to two sets of three reps, holding for 10 seconds. For the bird dog, do one to two sets of three reps per side, holding for 10 seconds. And finally, for the activated squat, do one to two sets of three to five repetitions. Now you wanna do this first thing in the morning, and then one to two more times throughout the day. So you can do it first thing in the morning, once before you go to bed, or any time in between there. Now, one thing I'd like to show you, if you work at a desk, is that you can do the activated squat throughout your day, maybe every half hour or hour, just do one to two reps. So you're sitting here, you're working, maybe you feel it, your back's starting to get a little bit achy, so you do it then. The same thing, but you're starting in this position. Activate the feet, so short and skinny foot. Activate the pelvic floor. Activate the butt, so you'll feel yourself get taller on your seat. And then from there, don't go into it with a lot of momentum, but try to go into it slowly, keeping those activation patterns on all the way to the top, so slight internal rotation. 
and then all the way down back to your seat. At the bottom is when you let everything relax and then you do it again. And you might find that this will help you to get rid of any achiness that would creep up when you're working at the office or at your desk and just can help you to get back to 100% being pain-free a lot faster. Now this video is for quick relief, so if you tried these exercises out, let me know how your back felt in the comments down below and hit us up with a like if you found it helpful. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel for more information and effective, easy exercises that you can do at home to help yourself move freely and without pain. And like I said, this video is for quick relief. This is not a comprehensive solution addressing all of the root causes of low back pain. So if you want more information on our approach, you can check out these videos up here. But for our comprehensive guided program to addressing the root causes of low back pain, check out our low back pain solution program. This is gonna take you from wherever you're at to zero pain and to a low back that stays pain-free no matter what it is you throw at it. Thank you for joining me here today. Keep moving.